All right, let's dive into prompt engineering. It's like the key to unlocking the power of LLMs. And luckily, we've got Lee Boonstra's white paper to guide us on this deep dive. It's full of practical techniques. It's awesome how Boonstra really makes it clear that you don't need to be a coding genius to do this. Anyone can become a prompt engineer. That's great to hear. So if it's not all about coding, then what is it? What's the secret sauce of this prompt engineering thing? Well, it all comes down to like understanding how these LLMs think. You yeah. know, they're like super advanced prediction machines, constantly guessing the next word based on what they're given. Okay, I'm starting to see the picture. <laughs> so prompt engineering, it's like giving these LLMs instructions, right? Yeah. To give them to give you the results you want. Exactly. You're crafting prompts that guide them toward what you're looking for. So it's kind of like giving directions, but to a super smart, but maybe easily distracted friend. You can't just say, take me to the best pizza place. You got to be specific. That's a spot on analogy. And just like with directions, you have to think about a bunch of things. Which LLM you're using, because they all have their quirks. How long your prompt is, your writing style, even how you structure your request. It's all about experimenting and refining as you go. Trial and error, classic. So once you've got the basics of giving clear instructions down, what are some other tricks we can use to fine tune these LLMs? Well, Boonstra gets into some really cool ways to tweak the output you get from an LLM. One of them is called temperature. Temperature. <laughs> now that sounds interesting. Think of it as a dial that controls how creative the LLM gets with its responses. You ever see those AI chatbots that go completely off the rails, spouting nonsense or just weird stuff? Oh yeah, I've definitely seen a few of those. Like they took a <laughs> random word generator and just let it loose on the internet. That's high temperature in action. It encourages the LLM to be unpredictable. Explore those less likely word choices. On the flip side, low temperature, it makes things more predictable sticking to safe, factual answers. So it's like choosing between like a wild experimental chef who throws ingredients together randomly and a meticulous baker who follows the recipe exactly. You nailed it. And there are other settings too, like Top K and Top P that kind of act like filters on the LLM's vocabulary. Okay, those sound a little technical. Break it down for me. Imagine the LLM has this giant dictionary in its head, right? With Top K, you're basically saying, hey, only use the top K most likely words for each step of your prediction. So it helps the LLM focus on a smaller, more relevant set of words. So instead of trying to juggle thousands of words, it narrows down the choices. Makes sense. Yep. And top P is similar, but instead of a fixed number of words, it uses a probability threshold. The LLM will only consider words that, like, together add up to a certain probability. It's a bit more nuanced, but the goal's the same. Make the output more coherent, less likely to wander off into weird tangents. So it's like gently nudging the LLM to stay on topic. Yeah. Keep it from going off on those wild high temperature ramblings. Precisely. Now let's dive into some actual prompting techniques. The simplest one is called zero shot prompting. Pretty much what it sounds like. You give the LLM a task, no examples, just straight to the point. Straight to the point, I like it. What kind of tasks can we throw at an LLM with this zero-shot approach? Well, Boonstra uses a fun example of classifying movie reviews. He gives the LLM a review that calls a film a disturbing masterpiece and asks it to say, is this a positive or negative review? Ooh, tricky. Even a human might have trouble with that one. Is disturbing good or bad in this context? Who knows? Exactly. It shows how LLMs can get tripped up by language. They don't have that nuanced understanding of human emotions or sarcasm, you know, things we kind of take for granted. That's a good point. We forget sometimes that LLMs are machines, even though they can produce human quality text. So if zero shot prompting is about giving no examples, what's next? Well, that would be one shot and few shot prompting. You give the LLM a small number of examples to learn from. So instead of just telling the LLM what to do, we show it. Exactly. It's like teaching by demonstration. Boonstra goes through a cool scenario of parsing pizza orders into JSON using just a few examples. Okay, now that sounds incredibly useful. So instead of trying to explain, like, all the rules of JSON syntax, you just show the LLM some correctly formatted orders, and it figures it out. Exactly. It's few-shot learning. It's powerful stuff, and it mimics how we learn a lot of things. Think about learning a new board game. Do you read the whole rule book, or do you watch someone play a round or two and jump in? Oh, definitely the latter. Seeing a few examples makes way more sense than trying to decipher a wall of text. Right, and that same principle applies to LLMs. Now let's get into the realm of more advanced techniques. Bring on the advanced stuff. I'm ready to level up my prompt engineering skills. One powerful technique is system prompts. It's all about setting the overall context for the LLM. 
So instead of just giving a specific task, you're giving it broader instructions, like to guide its behavior. You got it. You might tell it, you are a helpful assistant, or you are a factual encyclopedia. It's like setting the stage for the interaction. That makes sense. It's like giving the LLM a persona to play. Exactly. And Boonstra shows how you can even use a system prompt to force the LLM to output its responses in specific formats, like JSON. Ooh, I can see the value in that. Hmm. Having that structured data would make it so much easier to use its responses in other applications. Absolutely. And it can help reduce those hallucinations, too. Those moments where the LLM makes things up, goes off into inaccuracies. Hallucinations, that's such a great term for it. It's like the LLM is having a vivid dream and can't tell it's not real. It's a great analogy. And giving the LLM that structure, that format like JSON, can help keep it grounded in the real world. So system prompts set the context. What other advanced techniques should we know about? There's one that's even more fun, role prompts. You give the LLM a personality to take on. This sounds like we're getting into acting and improv now. What kind of roles are we talking about here? Honestly, the possibilities are endless. You could have it be a travel guide, a code reviewer, a stand-up comedian, even a historical figure. Boonstra even suggests messing around with different tones of voice. So you could have a sarcastic travel guide, a brutally honest code reviewer, uh, a Shakespearean stand-up comedian. I love it. Exactly. It's like giving the LLM a script, which can lead to some really creative and entertaining results. Okay, but wouldn't there be a risk of the LLM getting too caught up in the role, like forgetting about the actual task. That's a valid concern, which is why even when you're giving it a role, you still need to provide clear instructions and context. You wouldn't want a travel guide LLM giving you New York City tips when you ask for Amsterdam. That would be a disaster. Oh, so wow. yeah, context is key, even when we're encouraging the LLM to be creative. Absolutely. And that leads us to the third type of advanced prompting, contextual prompts all about giving the LLM specific background information for the conversation or task. So giving the LLM just enough backstory to understand what we're asking. Exactly. Imagine asking a friend for movie recommendations. You wouldn't just say, recommend a movie. You tell them what genres you like, what you've seen recently, maybe your mood. That's true. Context helps people understand your needs and preferences. And it's the same with LLMs. Yeah. Giving them that context helps them give more accurate, helpful responses. So I've got three advanced prompting techniques. System prompts for setting the scene, role prompts for playing a part, and contextual prompts for giving background info. Got it. You got it. Now, are you ready for some even more mind-bending techniques? Hit me with it. I'm ready to see what other prompt engineering magic we can unlock. Well, there's a technique called step-back prompting. It encourages the LLM to think about a broader question before tackling the main task. So instead of jumping right to the solution, we're asking the LLM to take a step back and see the bigger picture. Exactly. Boonstra has this great example where he's trying to generate a storyline for a video game level. But instead of asking for the storyline directly, he first prompts the LLM to think about engaging settings for video games in general. That's clever. It's like priming the pump for a more creative response. Precisely. By encouraging that brainstorming beforehand, you can get a richer, more nuanced storyline for the specific level. This is so fascinating. We're actually guiding the LLM's thought process in a strategic way. What other advanced techniques are out there? Okay, get ready for this one. It's called chain of thought prompting, or CoT for short. This is where things get really meta, because you're guiding the LLM to explain its reasoning step by step like how a human would solve a problem. This is sounding like some serious cognitive science stuff. It is. It's about mimicking how we humans think. Think about solving a math problem. We don't just leap to the answer. We break it down into steps, explain our logic as we go. That's so true. Show your work, not just give the final result. Exactly. And this approach can be super effective for LLMs, especially with tasks that need logical reasoning. You see, LLMs, they're trained on tons of text, but they don't understand the logic of, say, math in the same way we do. Right. So even though they can produce human quality text, they don't always grasp the concepts behind the words. Exactly. That's why Kipo T is so cool. It makes the LLM think like a human mathematician, breaking the problem down, explaining the steps as it goes. So we're giving the LLM a crash course in human logic. Precisely. And by doing that, we can help it overcome some of its limitations and achieve better accuracy, especially with things like math problems. Wow. This is mind blowing. So we're not just asking for the answer. We're asking the LLM to show its work. You got it.
And by making its thinking visible, not only do we improve its accuracy, but we also learn more about how it processes information and solves problems. This is amazing stuff. Yeah. Any other advanced techniques that use this idea of guiding the thought process? Yes. Self-consistency, which builds on that chain of thought idea. Instead of just running the prompt once, you run it multiple times, each time generating a different chain of thought. So you're getting multiple solutions from the same LLM. Exactly. And then you choose the answer that pops up most frequently across those runs. It's like taking a poll inside the LLM's brain. That's a great way to put it. And this can actually help reduce bias in the output. I can see that. If the LLM keeps coming up with the same answer through different thought processes, it's probably a more reliable unbiased solution. Exactly. It gives us more confidence in the results. Now, Boonstra also has a whole section on using prompts for things like writing code, explaining mm -hmm. it, translating it between languages, even debugging and reviewing code. So it's not just about text. We can use prompt engineering to work with code. That's amazing. It is. Imagine being able to generate code, understand a complex piece of code, or even find and fix bugs using an LLM. It's a game changer. Incredible. And Boonsuch even shares a story about using LLM-generated code to rename hundreds of files, and it actually worked. That it actually worked moment is going to resonate with a lot of listeners, especially ah. anyone who likes automating those tedious tasks and having more time for creative work. Totally. You know, we've covered a lot of ground here, but it feels like we're just scratching the surface of what's possible with prompt engineering. You're right. There's so much more to explore. Boonstra also lays out some great best practices for making sure your prompt engineering is successful, which I think we should definitely discuss next time. Let's save that for part two. My brain is already overflowing with all this information. We'll be back after a short break to dive into those best practices and see what else we can uncover. Welcome back. Let's get into some of those best practices Boonstra talks about. He really stresses the importance of giving the LLM clear examples, you know, especially when we're asking it to do something more complex. Right, like we're giving them some training wheels before letting them loose on the big stuff. Exactly. Remember that few shot learning thing we talked about? Giving those examples is super effective, but even then you got to keep things simple. So no using jargon or assuming the LLM knows as much as like a human expert? Nope. And be super clear about what you want as the output. Tell the LLM exactly. Don't leave anything up in the air. So instead of saying, give me some takeaways, I should say, I need a bulleted list of the five most important takeaways, something like that. You got it. Boonstra also says it's all about experimenting. There's no magic formula in prompt engineering. So try different things, see what works. Absolutely. Try different input formats, different writing styles, even different LLMs. Like we're scientists running experiments. Exactly. What works great with one LLM might totally flop with another. Which brings us to another key point, documentation. Keep track of what works, what doesn't. So it's not enough to just play around. We got to be organized, write down our observations. Yep. It's like keeping a lab notebook for all your prompt engineering experiments. Boonstra actually provides a table template, which is super helpful for keeping track of everything. It's so easy to get lost in all the experimenting. But yeah, if you don't document it, it's tough to learn and improve. And speaking of improving, stay up to date on those model updates. LLMs are constantly changing. It's like the rules of the game are always changing. It can be frustrating, but exciting too. For sure. And this is where tools like Vertex AI Studio are so helpful. You can store, test, and document all the different versions of your prompts. Keeps everything organized. So instead of having prompts scattered everywhere, you have a nice, clean view of all your work. Exactly. Now, Boonstra encourages us to think beyond just getting text output. Especially for things like extracting data or categorizing stuff, trying different output formats can be super valuable. Like that example we talked about with forcing the LLM to output in JSON format. Exactly. Structured data, it's just easier to work with. It cuts down on those hallucinations, keeps the LLM on track. Like using the right tool for the job. Sometimes you need a simple answer. Sometimes you need something more structured. Right on. And lastly, Boonstra makes it clear that prompt engineering shouldn't be a solo thing. Get other people involved. Two heads are better than one, especially when it comes to brainstorming those creative prompts. You said it. Imagine having a bunch of people come up with prompts, compare the results. You learn so much from that. Like a prompt engineering party? I love that. Before we move on, let's just zoom out for a sec. Remember, prompt engineering is an ongoing process. Always learning, refining, trying new things. Exactly. 
create those prompts, test them, see what happens, refine them, and keep experimenting. That's how you get the most out of these amazing LLMs. You know, I'm starting to get it. Not just the technical stuff, but the mindset too, that curiosity, that willingness to experiment. I love that. And speaking of new frontiers, remember those advanced techniques? Well, Boonstra gets into how LLMs can actually help us with things like writing code, explaining it, even debugging it. It's like having a coding buddy right there in the computer. Yeah. Think of it. Generating code, understanding complex code, finding bugs before they become a problem. It's revolutionary. It is. And while we've been focused on text prompts, there's this whole other world emerging. Multimodal prompting. Multimodal prompting. That's a new one. Tell me more. It's like this. Instead of just text, you use a mix of things to guide the LLM. Wait, so you're talking about using text, pictures, audio, even video all together? Yep. It's like giving the LLM multiple senses. It can perceive and respond in a much richer way. This is blowing my mind. It's like we're stepping into the future of how we interact with computers. We are. And while Gemini, you know, the model we've been talking about, it's mainly text focused. There's another one called Gemini Vision that takes this to a whole new level. Gemini Vision. That sounds like something straight out of sci-fi. What can it do? Well, Gemini Vision, it builds on what Gemini can do, but it can take in input from images and videos, too. It can do crazy things like read text from a photo, describe what's happening in an image, even answer questions based on what's happening in a video. Whoa, that is impressive. It's like the LMM has eyes now. Exactly. And this opens up so many possibilities for what we can do with LLMs. I can already imagine all kinds of cool applications, like helping someone who can't see well understand what's around them or creating interactive learning experiences. The possibilities are endless. And this just shows how prompt engineering is constantly evolving, pushing the boundaries of what we can do with LLMs. It's an exciting time to be learning about this stuff, that's for sure. What new breakthroughs are coming next? Who knows? But I think it's time for us to take a quick break and then wrap up our deep dive in part three. We'll leave you with some final thoughts to ponder. Sounds good. I definitely need a minute to digest all this amazing information. Okay, we're back, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around all the amazing things we've talked about. Prompt engineering has come so far. It's mind-blowing to think about what the future holds. It really is. It's like we've been given these tools to unlock new levels of problem-solving and creativity. It feels that way. Yeah. But as we wrap up this deep dive, I think it's important to step back for a moment and reflect on everything we've learned and what it means for us moving forward. I agree. We've covered so much from, like, the basic stuff, how to write a good prompt, all the way to those advanced techniques, the ones that almost mimic how we think. It's been a wild ride. It really has. Yeah. I feel like I have a whole new appreciation for LLMs now, but I also have this sense of like responsibility, you know? We need to approach this technology thoughtfully and carefully. Absolutely. Prompt engineering is more than just getting a machine to spit out an answer. It's about understanding what these LLMs can and can't do and using them in a way that benefits everyone. That's such a good point. It's easy to get carried away with all the exciting things we can do, but we can't forget that LLMs are still tools. We need to use them ethically and responsibly. Exactly. Any powerful technology can be misused. As prompt engineers, we have a responsibility to think about the consequences of what we're doing. No. We need to build things that are beneficial, not harmful. Well said. So as we close out our deep dive into this amazing world of prompt engineering, I want to leave our listeners with a challenge. Now that you have a better understanding of this technology, how are you going to use it to shape the future of LLMs? Will you be a force for good, creating things that solve real problems and make the world a better place? Or will you just focus on personal gain without thinking about the bigger picture? The choice is yours. The future of LLMs is in the hands of the people who are shaping this technology, the prompt engineers. Use your knowledge wisely and let's work together to make sure LLMs reach their full potential for good. 